Good morning, YouTube. Today I got something interesting for you. Here I have an unassuming little device in my hand, and if you just run into me with this on the streets, you might think I'm one of those doomers who was stuck to my mom's basement chair, playing a Tamagotchi toy in my late twenties, thirties. But what if I tell you that with this mere five ounces of plastic and silicon wafers, I can hack your smart home, computer, and even your vehicle? Behold, the Flipper Zero. So before I go in any deeper, I would like to point out that hacking technology has evolved way beyond what I just described. Now there are malware that could take full control of your systems just by opening an email of video. The Flipper is not the most powerful hardware by a long shot. A dedicated RFID reader or an IR blaster would most certainly have more raw power and capabilities than the Flipper. But the market have never seen something quite like this, where it integrates several relevant hacking-related technologies into such a small, consumer-friendly package. Before the flipper, hacking has exposed breadboards and convoluted wires and rolling codes. At least for me, I am intrigued but ultimately frightened. How the fuck am I supposed to make sense of all that? Shallow levels of coding and programming. Left me with a lingering migraine for days, and then there's the flipper. It takes things to a new level, a level where even muggles like me could familiarize and learn about hacking. Well, that's enough nonsense. Let's talk about this little dolphin. Before I go into its functionalities, I would like to first point out that there are some genuinely interesting engineering and development that went into this device. If you check out their blog, you can find out all about how they designed and made the thing, and it's nothing short of impressive. These people designed the mold for the casing themselves, and designing the tools to make a product is just a whole different and much more difficult ball game than just designing the product. On top of that, the device is also feature packed and feels very quality. Go check out the cross section pics on their blog. It's mind-boggling on how much work went into this tiny thing. The flipper has several subsystems that grant us amazing versatility. I'll be going through them one by one. However, I won't go into specifics of how to set yours up because I am rather new to this and would like to leave the teaching part to those who know better. You can find quality tutorials easily on YouTube and Reddit. Discord is also a good resource for help. With all that said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I will try to answer it to my best of my capabilities. The first system of the flipper is the sub G hertz antenna. The term sub G hertz refers to the frequency. The system allows you to read, analyze, and send radio signals that are within 200 megahertz to 1 gigahertz range. And if you aren't totally oblivious to technology, you will quickly realize the great potential of this system. Massive amounts of home remote systems, vehicle key fobs, garage doors, and radio stations operate in this range. Having the ability to tap into this frequency means being able to detect, communicate with, and control a wide range of devices. Now, before I get your hopes up. I would like to point out that how these devices actually operate is much, much more complicated than what I just described. There are authentication and encryption and all kinds of mechanisms implemented on both hardware and software level that will act as a big cock blocker to your illicit access. If you would like to access the inaccessible, on top of an excellent piece of hardware like the Flipper. You will also need plenty of research and knowledge on both general radio technologies and the system that you are trying to access. Do not expect to pay two hundred bucks and you suddenly talk to all the machines and become electronic demon. That's not going to happen. The second system of the flipper is the RFID and NFC antennas. Notice that these are actually two sets of antennas, but they are both some type of RFID systems. So I put them into the same category. Some examples of devices that use the RFID tech includes employee cards, 
building key fobs, pet tags, and bank payment systems. First things first, RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. NFC stands for Near Field Communication. NFC is a type of RFID. To put things brutally short and simple, the required information for access is stored on a chip. The chip is activated when it's brought near the electronic field generated by the card reader. The two will exchange information, and if the reader determines the information is correct, access is granted. The flipper has a 125 kilohertz RFID antenna and a 13.56 megahertz NFC antenna. The combination of these systems allow the flipper to read a large number of various access keys. What's even better is the flipper could remember and later emulate that information it reads from the unsuspecting host. Emulating basically means that the flipper will act as an imposter and trick the rate reader slash lock into granting you the access to things not exactly meant for you. As you can see here, the flipper could read my debit card and several other ID documents with its NFC antenna. It could even identify the card number for my debit card, which is pretty scary. I feel like it's necessary to warn you before I go on. Being able to access stuff does not mean that you are free from the risk of getting arrested, targeted, or hurt. The point of hacking education is to equip you with necessary knowledge to not become a victim in our increasingly chaotic world, not for you to run around and steal people's nudes. Be ethical and thoughtful of how you use your skills, or be ready for backlash. Backlash is not fun. Karma is a motherfucking bitch. I can tell you this much. The third system of the flipper is the infrared receiver and blaster. I believe this should be the most friendly section for our tech muggles. You don't need to understand anything technology to be able to use TV remote. You take the device, press a button, TV turns on, bam. Again, to make things terribly compact and comprehensible, infrared is a type of low energy electromagnetic wave that's just beyond the visible spectrum. It's an inexpensive and simple tech. We fully take advantage of that by widely using them in TV, audio, air conditioning system remotes. The flipper could read, emulate, infrared signals, basically allowing you to use it as a universal remote. The fourth system of the flipper is the iButton reader. This oddball of a contraption has three contact pins. The one in the middle was a ground pin. You read and write with the I button on either of these two locations on the side. Now, I really can't tell you much about an I button. I have probably seen such device once in the three decades of my life, roaming around Asia, Europe, and America. From what I understand, the I button is the commonest version of RFID, utilizing a similar concept but requiring physical contact to power the chip and read the data for access. I would opt out of this feature if there's an option, but there isn't. Would you be so surprised if I tell you now that the flipper is developed by a group of Russians? The fifth system of the flipper is the GPIO port. I'm ashamed to report that I know even less about this than the I button. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. You have multiple of these ports that could supply power and send signal to third-party electronic components. This is also uh, there is also a developer board that will grant Wi-Fi capabilities installed through the GPIO ports. I don't find this specific feature useful in my daily life. I emphasize on mine. But I do appreciate it because it essentially allows you to communicate with the quote unquote dumb machines that don't have any remote remote access capabilities. The sixth system of the flipper is the bad USB. Now, the bad USB is not a piece of hardware. It's a type of malware that would trick the victim device into thinking that it's a keyboard. It exploits an inherent weakness of the USB technology. 
enters keystroke combinations that would recon, exfiltrate, and sabotage information stored on the victim device. Here you can see a little demonstration of it in action. And notice that this is only a harmless little piece of code that downloads an audio file and play it at max volume while setting my background. And there are much more sinister things that could be achieved by this type of attack. However, it is limited by the inherent need to be developed by a physical device. Of course, you can deliver bad USB scripts over the air, but if you're able to do that, you probably have 200 other malwares that could cause more destruction and are more suitable for the job. The last system of the flipper is the U2F authentication. U2F stands for Universal Two-Factor Authentication. It basically is a physical device with a piece of information that can't be accessed remotely, used to grant you access to important accounts. The Flipper hardware has the necessary architecture to perform a such physical authentication token, which is handy. And these are all the major features of the Flipper Zero. You might have noticed that mine have a couple more tricks up its um, silicon wafers like the spectrum analyzers that tells me what kind of devices are running around me. And this is because I have custom firmware. I will not cover the specifics on that in this video, but I do want you to know that the Flipper Zero has more potential to be explored with further firmware updates. And there you have it, the Flipper Zero, the unassuming, utility-packed, ultimate geek toy for a technology inept like me. This has motivated me to learn about software and hardware. It opens a brand new door for amazing access, not just to people's smart homes and selfies, but to a whole new world of vast knowledge. The Flipper Zero is a well-designed and executed product, both functional, fun, and educational. A truly inspiring gadget. I fucking love it. Hey, Flipper team, a big good job to you.